Generally, schools tend to look for courses that are more well-rounded. And those are the classes that I took, which were probably the highest level of difficulty. But it's also the case that you want variety to some extent. It's to spend lots of time talking to teachers. There's just lots of benefits of being able to talk to somebody who's older than you, was able to give you some kind of advice as to how to navigate high school, how to navigate college and beyond. Hey, I'm Justin. I am currently a sophomore at Johns Hopkins University studying International Studies and Economics and went to the Loomis Chafee School for high school. I will not lie, grades are the most important thing. You are not going to get a 3.4 and get into Harvard unless you have a really special talent or unless your parents go to Harvard. I think there are a couple things that are the most important in this sense. Firstly, on course selection. Firstly, picking the courses that suit your passion. For me, I think most of my classes were around something internationally significant or something around history classes. And those are the classes that I took, which were probably the highest level of difficulty. But it's also the case that you want variety to some extent. And for example, there are some few basic guidelines that I think most of my classmates who got into top schools still follow. There are five classes. Not all five classes have to be in one subject. Oftentimes your school will tell you to like have some variety anyways before you're able to graduate. So what are these things that colleges look for? Firstly, from my experience, it looks like a for taking a foreign language for three to four years and demonstrating that you're proficient in that at some level, especially if your school offers that and you've had every opportunity to be able to take that language. Because often times it shows that you're willing to take a new language, you're willing to learn something brand new, and you're able to apply this in specific contexts, which are also likely to be quite important. The second thing here is that it's important that you've taken some kind of science or math for three or four years because it shows that you're relatively well-rounded. The same goes for more STEM-oriented students. It's important that you take an English or history also for three or four years. So it shows that you're well-rounded, you're able to take the courses that may arise in a college course, even if some might be easier and some might be harder. Generally, schools tend to look for courses that are more well-rounded. So physics, chemistry, biology should be taken at least for one year each. So it shows that you're relatively well-rounded and are able to take most of the courses that are offered in college at an introduction level. But the second thing I want to talk about in terms of academics is course rigor. It is not the case that most people have to take 13 or 14 APs. It's less important to load on APs than it is for you to, I think, focus on taking the hardest courses that are offered in your high school for specifically the topics that you're available or really enjoy and using that time for founding a club, doing outreach for internships, etc. I think those are more important because it demonstrates a spike. Every college wants a spike and the reason why they want a spike is because they are looking for the most diverse student body in terms of how it fits together collectively. So it's not the case that you as an individual need to be the most well-rounded person because this trades off with you being able to specialize in a specific thing. And this is really important when if everybody else specializes in a specific thing, for example, if I'm the humanities major and this person next to me is the CS major and this other person next to me is the really talented violinist, if a school combines all of these people together, they are going to get the more diverse and talented student body in comparison to if everybody was mildly good at something but therefore collectively they're just mildly good at everything and there's no actual talent so that's the reason as to why most schools and most people say you should specialize in specific types of skills is to spend lots of time talking to teachers. The really important thing is you don't see them as teachers as much as you just see them as mentors or like adults that you're really close with because outside of being teachers, these are also the people that are likely to coach you in specific sports. They're likely to be your dorm parents. So when you interact with them in a variety of contexts, at least for me, this is where I saw teachers, not just as teachers, but also people that are people and who you can connect to with as opposed to seeing them only in the classroom. And this is really important because as you talk to teachers and understand Understand them more. I think firstly, there's just lots of benefits of being able to talk to somebody who's older than you, was able to give you some kind of advice as to how to navigate high school, how to navigate college and beyond. But secondarily, I think on a gamified level, teachers are also good for recommendations, right? And they generally help you get better grades, especially when you're able to talk to them. For example, what they look for in an essay or what are the writing styles that they really tend to enjoy. And then that allows you to tailor your own work to their preferences which is, I figured out is also quite important because the number one thing that humanities students like to whine about is saying that the teacher did not like my writing style and therefore I got a B. There is a greater way to circumvent this, which is firstly to acknowledge that there are always going to be differences in stylistic preferences because this teacher was exposed to a certain style of writing that 
that they really enjoyed versus you who might have learned this differently. Therefore, admit this to yourself and recognize that it's not going to get any better if you continue writing the same way and rather to try to talk to a teacher and try to talk to other people in how to fix this to tailor it to their own preferences. This is really annoying because you have to do this once a year for every English class that you take, but it is infinitely better when for maybe the first week or two, you try figuring out what the teacher wants and then for the rest of the year, you have a really easy time in comparison to just tanking these for entire year. So this is quite important in terms of being able to talk to teachers, being able to understand how they think and what their preferences are. And I think students don't use this enough because of the fact that they are shy. I think the best way for you to think about this, even if you are, is just that these are people who are here to help you. These are obviously the best teachers. If they weren't the best, wouldn't have been hired. So you're in capable hands and these are definitely people that you can resonate with. Your leadership initiatives are really important here, which is that even if you find this something boring and this is a problem you identify on campus and you try to fix it, that's really important. But how do you try to identify those things that allow you to have leadership initiatives in the first place? I think firstly, it is oftentimes by identifying a problem. For me, if I see the way in which students interact and I'm like, ah, maybe that's not right. That's therefore a way in which you can insert yourself to fix a certain thing. For example, in senior year, I made a course on East Asian history. And this is actually something that's being taught in Loomis right now. I'm quite happy about it. But the reason why I come up with this project in the first place was because I look at the school's history curriculum and I'm like, why is there college level European history? And why is there lots of courses on the American Civil War? But why in this curriculum do I not see anything about East Asian history? And I think the reason why this is important is because there are lots of international students who are coming to Loomis and there are increasingly more of them each year, but they can't seem to find any sort of representation in the student body or through history curriculums, which I think have massive amounts of educational power in teaching students about whether historical narratives are true or false. It allows them to critique their old views, which might be relatively Western-centric, etc. The reason why this, therefore, becomes my passion project is because I'm able to first identify a problem around me and secondarily, figure out the resources that I want to use to be able to help address this problem. So the first part of this, obviously, starts with you being more critical and I think just generally being more observant of the types of things around you and not being the most willing person to say like, ah, this is fine, right? Because obviously, and I think for high schoolers especially, there are lots of things that annoy you to some extent. Figure out why they annoy you and then try to see if you can fit this in a lens that colleges might like. Secondarily, I think this also comes into the part of utilizing your resources best because I think when you're able to utilize your resources best, for example, if you have a go-to teacher in the history department that you've talked to for a long amount of time, or if you are very familiar with the librarian who knows how to get you the best books and resources for a certain initiative that you want to be able to pursue, this makes the research or solution process of these initiatives much easier if you have people who are able to talk to and if you have people who you can trust already which is usually better than having to talk to strangers about this thing especially if they're unfamiliar about your track record as a student whether or not you'll actually carry out the initiative Firstly, identify whether or not this is something that like you actually enjoy, right? So if I'm doing this all just for the sake of college apps, I think my life in high school would have been a lot more miserable than it actually was. But rather, I think I saw these, especially with my leadership initiatives, for example, the East Asian Studies course that I made, as just something that I personally enjoyed a lot and thought would be really cool to have if, for example, there were lots of students afterwards who would not be as misunderstood as the international students who came before them. So I think having some kind of personal connections to the things you do in high school make that much more meaningful and therefore encourage you to provide more effort than you would without it.